You know, I like to consider myself a 90s guy. I mean, I was born in 1992, and when I was a kid, life was heaven on earth. I owned plenty of classic video game consoles and titles, the movies back then were amazing, though a bit dated by today's standards I'll admit. The music industry was dominated by catchy tunes from boy bands, girl groups, rock groups, and solo artists that won't leave your head after you've listened to them for the first time, and we had both the Barcelona and Atlanta Summer Olympic Games to feast our eyes at. More importantly, I and lots of other kids my age had access to the most kick-ass animated programming this side of the planet. We were never short on shows that kept us occupied. When our favorite series wasn't on air, then you bet your ass that we'd still tune in to whatever was showing anyway. And usually we'd end up enjoying that too. From the Nicktoons of Nickelodeon, to the animated lineup of the Disney Channel, to the cartoon cartoons and classic Hanna-Barbera library on Cartoon Network, the 90s shaped itself up to be one of the most memorable eras of the animation industry. The shows back then pushed countless boundaries, new faces began to make names for themselves whilst the veterans still went strong, and the standards for the medium were raised as a result. The strangest part to me though is that not many people ever acknowledge the root of the animation renaissance. Names like Gendy Tartakovsky, Craig McCracken, Denny Antonucci, Lauren Fast, Rob Renzetti, Cindy and Clayton Morrow, and Chris Savino are all awesome, there's no denying that. But what about the start of it all? People often overlook how the animation renaissance kicked off. That doesn't sound quite right to me. Because there's one thing, or better yet, one person, that needs to be brought up. If not for this one person, none of this would be a reality. And that one person is Frederick Seibert, or Fred for short. I like to consider Fred the epitome of a visionary, always a step ahead of everyone else in any given industry he's in, finding potential in everything he sees, and bringing that potential to complete fruition. It almost seems like he was meant to be a pioneer from the very beginning. For God's sakes, he started his own record label when he was just a student studying at Columbia University, and that's not going into his work producing albums in the independent music scene of the 1970s. Once the 80s rolled in, Fred would put his experience in the music industry to good use by... going into cable television. Don't look at me, I have no idea how that works. But the important thing is, it does work. Fred was among the many who were there for the launch of music television, or MTV, in 1981, acting as the very first creative director for the network. He gave MTV its identity as a music-dedicated channel that delivered music videos hot out of the oven, and went the extra mile by creating the iconic I Want My MTV promotional campaign and designing the constantly changing MTV logo, completely ignoring any objections made by the network executives. You go, Fred. Show those corporate shitheads who's really in charge. While continuing his tenure at MTV, Fred and his partner Alan Goodman were approached by Robert Bob Pittman, who was the founder and then president of Viacom, which at the time was named MTV Networks. Bob assigned Fred and Alan, via their own company Fred Allen Inc., the same creative roles over at Nickelodeon, which back then performed poorly in terms of ratings. Within the following six months, Nickelodeon rebounded from their dire straits and ascended to the spot of number one cable network in America. I'm sensing a domino effect here. Are you? Fred's experiences at both MTV and Nickelodeon would then serve him well in the future when Turner Broadcasting appointed him the final president of Hanna-Barbera Studios before they inevitably folded in 2001. He held the role from 1992 to 1996, and during that time, brought the company down the same course that Nickelodeon went, revitalizing its status as an animation powerhouse. How did he do so, you ask? I'll give you three words. Ah yes, what a cartoon. This shit was my jam! This half hour long cartoon showcase was the progenitor that set Cartoon Network apart from its competition. Initially featuring a whopping 48 original short films from creators all across the globe, and then bringing in an additional 34 a few years later, it birthed almost every single classic series that you immediately associate with the channel, or better known as the Cartoon Cartoons. And they are Dexter's Laboratory by Gendy Tartakovsky, Johnny Bravo by Van Partible, Cow and Chicken and I Am Weasel both by David Feiss, The Powerpuff Girls by Craig McCracken, Courage the Carolee Dog by John R. Dilworth, Mike Lewin Og by Mikhail Shindel, Mikhail Aldashin, and Charles Swenson, Sheep in the Big City by Mo Williams, Whatever Happened to Robot Jones by Greg Miller, Codenamed Kids Next Door by Mr. Thomas Warburton, and Grim and Evil, later The Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy, and Evil Con Carne, all by Maxwell Adams. And it might have been indirectly responsible for Family Guy by Seth MacFarlane. Yeah, I know, a pretty small world we live in, huh? 
Seth worked on four of the 13 cartoon cartoons, Dexter's Lab, Johnny Bravo, Cow and Chicken, and I Am Weasel. He started his career through his own submission for What a Cartoon, called Larry and Steve, which could be seen as a family guy prototype as far as character designs go. Bet you didn't know that, did ya? Well, you do now. After Hanna-Barbera became a subsidiary of Warner Brothers Animation as a result of the merger between Time Warner and Turner Broadcasting in 1996, Fred stepped down from his presidential position to create his own animation studio, Frederator Studios. If you're like me and have seen the name since God knows when, you're probably led to believe that their claim to fame is the Fairly Odd Parents. But it wasn't. You wanna know what it was? Three more words. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Cartoon! Oh yeah! Cartoon! Oh Yeah Cartoons was Nickelodeon's direct response to their rising competitor Cartoon Network's very own What a Cartoon. It follows the same premise of showcasing an anthology of cartoon shorts with the possibility of a number of them being developed into their respective animated series in the future. Except their lineup was much larger than What a Cartoons by a wide margin boasting a whopping 173 original shorts. You might think that this is the channel's first cartoon showcase, but it's not. That honor goes to Kablam, which was dedicated to animation styles that were once thought to be unconventional, primarily stop motion and claymation. The lineup for Oya oh yeah! cartoons featured more traditional animation styles. It's also had better long-term success than Kablam ever did, having actually spawned a set of cartoon series in its lifespan. The Fairly Odd Parents by Butch Hartman, My Life as a Teenage Robot by Rob Renzetti, Chalk Zone by Bill Burnett and Larry Huber, and the highly demanded but yet to be developed Mina and the Count, also by Rob Renzetti. Not to say that Kablam wasn't a success. We did get Angela Anaconda. My name is Angela, hey hello! Welcome to my very own show! I'll introduce my friends to you! Oh no, it's Nitty Poo! Um... Come to think of it, that's a terrible example. For the sake of your sanity, and mine, I'm not going to talk about it at all. Wow. I guess us 90s kids used to have it bad every now and then. Go figure. Like with What a Cartoon and Cartoon Network, Oh Yeah Cartoons gave Nickelodeon its identity for the turn of the century and proved that the channel was not out of the game. I hope you're watching, Stuart Snyder, and I hope you're taking notes too. You stupid mother With how expansive Fred's cable television portfolio is, you might be thinking that this is the only avenue that he's ever focused on. And the answer to that would be a flat out no. Whenever Fred's not involved with the animation industry, he's out there revolutionizing the internet. Taking advantage of emerging new technologies such as the Apple iPod and the Sony PlayStation Portable, Fred launched Channel Frederator, billed as the first cartoon podcast with the intention of showcasing original animation from up-and-coming creators. In 2007, he along with four of his colleagues founded Next New Networks, try saying that five times in a row fast, a web television company that, you guessed it, incorporated internet-based and television-based programming together and focused on both the broadcasting and production aspects. The Triple N, as I'd like to refer to it, would inspire the foundation of several future multi-channel networks from Machinima to Channel Flip. In addition to this, this man founded Tumblr. Seriously. Okay, not really. He didn't exactly found Tumblr, but he had a significant role in its inception. Tumblr's founder David Karp started an internship with Frederator Studios in 2004, and three years later launched the website at a rented desk in the studio's offices at Park Avenue. Cybert was among the first bloggers on the website and was, and probably still is, an angel investor. Lately, Fred has been busy with the expansion of the Frederator brand, doing so through the creation of the YouTube channel Cartoon Hangover and the rebranding of Channel Frederator from a weekly bi-weekly podcast to a multi-channel network centered on bringing out emerging talent in the constantly evolving animation industry. This man sure gets around. In case I haven't clarified it, I have nothing but absolute respect for this man. Fred's decades worth of expertise have enabled him to resonate with the trends and audience of a current generation. To paraphrase a statement that he made in an interview, his perspective on life is that there are two kinds of approaches, the practical way or the impractical way. According to him, the practical way is too uniform or too normal for his liking, especially for a profession, like animation, that is so driven by a person's creativity. So the only sensible thing to do is to go the impractical route, which is filled to the brim with uncertainties, but has a greater chance of leaving a strong impression. I can't really say exactly how he worded that, but that's the closest I can come to. Not to say that a practical profession is flat out wrong to pursue. 
We still need stockbrokers, scientists, accountants, doctors, nurses, lawyers, teachers, plumbers, electricians, soldiers, and athletes. There will always be a place in the world for them. Fred is undoubtedly a business-minded man, but he's also an art-minded man. Neither the business nor the art sides really overshadow the other in his point of view. Unlike particular people or groups of people in entertainment, Stuart Snyder, Disney, WWE and Vince McMahon, assholes, he isn't one to just give up on an idea and let it die a premature death. He allows them a chance to blossom into the best that they can be. This point ties in with the biggest reason why I admire Fred Seibert so much. Why I put him into an echelon of awe-inspiring names in popular media. In all the years that he's been around the block, Fred never, ever took anyone's side. Not Cartoon Network, not Disney, not Nickelodeon, no one. Sure, he masterminded What a Cartoon for Cartoon Network and Oya oh yeah Cartoons for Nickelodeon, but he never stayed with one side for an extended period of time, nor did he have any kind of obligation to. Quality animation and talented individuals, both new and old, are what matters to him. His dedication lies within the industry as a whole, not a mere facet of it. If something is loaded with potential, if something is good, or he is convinced that has the makings to be good, he will see to it that it shines at brightest. This mindset is why Fred Seibert is a powerhouse in animation and why I have such admiration for him. If every other executive in any industry has the same vision as him, those industries would flourish. On behalf of cartoon and animation fans all over the world, and from the bottom of my heart, thank you, Fred Seibert. Thank you for your undying contribution and loyalty, and for setting the type of example that anyone can proudly follow. Let's give Fred Seibert a round of applause, everyone. He deserves it. I'm the one and only CR Martin, and I'll see you guys later. Ciao for now. You've opened up my eyes, you're so humble.